Hey everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. I have a good one for you guys today and I am pumped. So yesterday, after a one week delay, we got a Watt Wednesday on Twitter with some huge news. If you haven't already heard about the news, we have some major casting announcements to go over today. I waited a day to get this out because I wanted to binge everything I could for each of the casting choices so I could have legitimate opinions on whether or not they're any good. So in this video, we're going to be going through each of the casting choices. I'll tell you a little bit about what they've done work-wise, a bit about who they are, and give some analysis on their prior work that I've been able to watch over the last day. Then I'll let you know if I think they're gonna do well in the role. At the end of the video, I'll give you my overall analysis of the choices, what it means for the series at large, and some ideas on the direction of the show based on what we know about the casting choices. I do wanna give a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, audible.com. They are the largest supplier of audiobooks in the world, and I use them regularly. If you are new to the Wheel of Time or you're thinking about doing a reread in anticipation of the new show, I truly believe audiobooks are a great way to experience the Wheel of Time. It's also a great way to help get someone into the book series that doesn't have a ton of time to sit down and read. Just have them listen to the audiobooks. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer are outstanding in their narration. Which brings me to the offer that Audible is giving to my viewers. You can get a free audiobook so you can check out the platform and get used to the idea of listening to a book. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nameless and sign up for a one month free trial. You'll be able to keep your audiobook regardless of whether you keep the service or not, and you greatly help out the channel just by signing up for the trial. I also want to throw up a spoiler warning for the video. This video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow, meaning it will have very minor general spoilers. I will not be talking about any major plot points, mainly just talking in generalities about the characters and their personalities, and some of the struggles they go through in the books. So you won't need to worry about plot spoilers, but if you don't want even general things spoiled, maybe even just their emotions, you may want to hold off until you finish the books. So the first casting announcement they made yesterday was that of Joshua Stradowski as Rand Althor. Joshua is a 24-year-old actor from the Netherlands that has been acting since he was a young child on the stage in musicals and doing a children's TV series in the Netherlands called Spangus. He has also starred in a couple of Dutch movies called Caged, I Can Fly, and most recently a movie called Just Friends, in which he played the starring role and received some critical acclaim for his performance. In doing some research for this video, I rented and watched Just Friends to get an idea of his acting abilities, and I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with this choice. In the movie, he plays an internally conflicted character dealing with pressures from his family and from his love interest. He was forced to do a good bit of emoting to act rather than simply relying on dialogue, and he was outstanding. Like, he was really able to play a brooding figure really well, and he had the ability to show emotion, both happy and excited, as well as great anger and anguish. I, I was really impressed with him, and he certainly has the stature to carry the role. It'll be really exciting to see him take on the part over the next few years. Some interesting stuff on Joshua. I found out that he was quadlingual, meaning he speaks fluent German, English, Polish, and Dutch, which is certainly impressive coming from a dumb American who only speaks about 1.25 languages, if you count my Spanglish. He's an active swimmer in his past, and he's in really good shape. After doing research and watching Just Friends, I'd say I feel really good about this pick. I think they nailed it. You can follow Joshua Stradowski on Twitter at joshstradowski1. Make sure to check him out there. The second announcement yesterday was Marcus Rutherford being announced as Paranabara. Marcus is another young actor with some very serious and powerful roles under his belt. He has starred in two movies and received critical acclaim and award nominations for his roles in one of them. He had a role in a movie called County Lines and a starring role in a movie called Obey that came out in 2018. He received a nomination for Most Promising Newcomer from the British Independent Film Awards. In my binging spree to prepare for this video, I watched Obey, the movie that he was nominated for that award for, and I have to say, I understand why Rave said that he made every person watching his scene read cry when he was auditioning. He has a very quiet intensity and understands how to express emotion with his facial expressions. He has a really quiet nature in general and he's kind of calm and measured, but I loved his performance. 
He's literally going to be perfect for Perrin. Like, this is Perrin. He's strong, but maybe not quite as thick as Perrin would be described. So I'm curious if he's going to be spending time trying to bulk up for the role, as physical size is one of Perrin's most notable features. Marcus does appear to be pretty darn tall, though. You can follow Marcus on Twitter at Marcus underscore Rudda. There was some confusion at his name because his Twitter handle is Marcus Rudda, but his actual name is Marcus Rutherford. Just a heads up. I've seen a couple of news articles getting that wrong. The third announcement was that of Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve Almira. Zoe is a 26-year-old New Zealand-born actress best known for her roles in the Shannara Chronicles on MTV, The Killian Curse, and Nickelodeon's Power Rangers Ninja Steel, where she plays the starring role of Haley Roster. So I've seen Shannara Chronicles, and I know that doesn't give many of you great hopes, as that was one of the worst adaptations of a fantasy series I've seen, especially one that was pretty well-respected, in the Shannara Chronicles in general, but keep in mind, she just played a role in it. She didn't write the show and she didn't produce it. I also took the time to watch a few episodes of her Power Rangers show, and although it's designed for kids, she clearly commands the screen. She can certainly give facial expressions that we all expect from Nynaeve, and I'm sure she'd be great at pulling on her braid. <laughs> uh, I think she's gonna do great in this role. The next character casting they announced was Barney Harris as Matram Cawthon. Barney has three major movie roles in All Roads Lead to Rome, Billionaire Boys Club, and Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. I watched Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk last night, and while Barney's role in the movie isn't huge, he plays a character that is in the army and is somewhat lighthearted and joking at the beginning of the movie, but is later traumatized by his time fighting in a war. He shows a range of emotion that shows him to be a very good actor. It wasn't a huge role, so it was hard to get a total feel for his acting chops, but he made great use of what he had to work with. The biggest takeaway for me, though, was this. His mannerisms and the way he carries himself are exactly how I always pictured Matt. He like his smile and look just scream Matt Cawthon to me as you watch him act. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see, but from everything I could find, I was thrilled with this pick. You can follow Barney on Twitter at BarneyHarrisO. The last casting that we got yesterday was Madeline Madden being cast as Egwene Alvere. This is a huge casting, as Egwene is possibly the most important role after Rand in the series. Although her character doesn't start off being the most important, by the end of the series, she's essentially Rand's counterpart. So this is a role they have to nail. Madeline Madden is a 22-year-old Australian-born actress best known for her roles in Picnic at Hanging Rock in the new movie Dora and the Lost City of Gold. I was able to watch three episodes of Picnic at Hanging Rock, a show on Amazon of which she has a supporting role in, just to get a feel for her as an actress. I will admit that watching this show didn't cause her to jump out to me as Egwene, but the longer that I watched her, the more impressed I was. The character that she plays in the show isn't much like Egwene in personality, so it was really difficult to connect the two, but as the show went on, I could see her in the role more and more. She's just a very good actress. She has the self-confidence and intelligent look that Egwene possesses, and I can see her frustrating Rand to no end, which is a big part of Egwene's role in the beginning of the series. The longer I watched, the more I could see Egwene in her. You can follow Maddie on Twitter at Tiger Madden. So these are the casting announcements and some huge announcements they were. So what do I think of the picks as a whole? Well, I'm very happy with what I've seen so far. The main criteria I've been looking at personally is acting ability. I'm not the slightest bit concerned about the way they look, as I've stated in past videos, mainly because I know that makeup and costume design can create a look that's hard for us to see sometimes when we're just looking at headshots. I would much rather they got actors and actresses with great acting ability rather than trying to word for word match them to their physical descriptions from the book. I'd quickly like to address some of the criticism I've read about the fact that many of the actors selected are either black or have a much darker complexion. I understand this is not what many readers may have pictured in these characters in their heads as they read, but I do want to point out that Robert Jordan did lead this very open-ended. We are not told anything about their complexion beyond that Rand is very pale-skinned and has reddish hair, and that many of the other Two Rivers folk were dark-haired. Later, when describing the Two Rivers in Eye of the World, Elida mentions that the Two Rivers people are darker-skinned and have dark eyes and dark hair. All of these actors fit that description from a physical standpoint, and even if they didn't, as long as they can act well, it really doesn't matter. Many critics to that point of view will refer back to an interview that Robert Jordan did years ago in which he gave a few actors and actresses that he had in his head when he wrote the different characters, and many of them were white. They will use this to say that the characters should have been the same as what he envisioned. Now, I have two responses to this. For one, we don't know whether these were his casting choices 
or just people that he used physical features from as a reference when envisioning his characters. He could have been referencing a character's nose, for instance, not their skin color. I think it would be sort of ridiculous to assume that Robert Jordan wanted Perrin to look exactly like a young Val Kilmer. Maybe certain features. Either way, these were famous actors at the time, and so that's who he had as a reference. That does not mean that he absolutely intended them to have that exact skin tone of the person he said. Secondly, regardless of what Robert Jordan envisioned the characters as while he wrote it, this is an adaptation that will be shown around the world. This is not a purely American audience, and nor would it really matter if it was. They are making the show for us fans, but they're also wanting to pull in new audiences and frankly make money. It will benefit them to have different types of people represented. That's how adaptations work. I'm not at all saying that you're wrong if you don't like some of the choices. I'm simply saying that it is probably not because it's against what the books say, but more of a personal preference on your end, and that's fine. Obviously, as I've stated, I'm very happy with these choices. Now, I will offer up some more food for thought as well if you aren't one of the people that's happy with the casting decisions that have been released. I was around years ago for the casting of Game of Thrones when it was released, and I had read previously the Song of uh, Ice and Fire books. There was quite a bit of fuss over some of the casting choices for that show, Peter Dinklage being one of them. He was criticized for not having blonde hair, being too attractive. I, I remember people saying that it wasn't cool just to select him because of his stature and that he'd really never pull off the part. Now, it's sort of funny to think back on that now as he was obviously perfect for that part and one of the highlights of the entire show. My point is simply this. There are times where a casting choice will go against your headcanon until you finally see the show and then you're able to kind of see what the showrunners saw and then all of a sudden that person becomes that person in your head. That's just the nature of reading books, and that's always going to be an issue when adapting a book. Also, to address the relative unknown status for many of the actors and actresses here, as has been said in the past, many of us have assumed that the main cast would be actors and actresses with less experience, simply due to the realities of making a long-term adaptation project. In a long series like The Wheel of Time, the main characters may be needed for eight plus years. If these were extremely high-profile actors and actresses, then it would be prohibitively expensive considering the number of main characters in a series like this. Again, look at Game of Thrones. The main characters were all relative small names at the beginning and became household names by the end of the series. Expect that to happen here if The Wheel of Time gets a full run. The reason I am optimistic that this adaptation is going to succeed is because of the people behind it, and I'm not just talking about Rafe. You didn't see my video on everything you should know about The Wheel of Time show and why you should be excited. Make sure to check that out after this because I go into some of this in more detail, but but on the whole, the production design, special effects, casting directors, writers, and directors for the show itself are all top of the line. These people are some of the best you can get in the industry. Until I have reason not to, I'm going to trust that they know what they're doing. Combine that with watching all of these actors and actresses in their previous movies and TV shows, I will say that I am actually more excited for the Wheel of Time TV show now than I was before the announcement. And that's saying something considering I'm a total nerd and have a Wheel of Time YouTube channel. So what do you guys all think of the casting news? I'm excited to see what some of you think about this news and whether it makes you more excited or less excited about the show. Please let me know in the comments below. Also, take a moment and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to get more Wheel of Time content. Guys, there's going to be a ton more news coming out and I will be covering all of it. On top of that, I put out regular Wheel of Time content, whether it be character analysis, whether it be just going through the books, highlighting some things that you may not have noticed before. And on top of that, guys, not just for the channel perspective, but I've got some other big news coming down the line that I think will involve the entire Wheel of Time community. So I'm very excited about that. Make sure to subscribe uh, so you can be a part of that. Also, if you want to support what I'm doing here, make sure to check out my Patreon. You can find that link in the, in the description below, but that's the best way you can support what I do and get some access to some patron-only content. Hey, thank you all for watching the video. Until next time, Peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?